we might be. Um, we've just surpassed the 100 mark uh, number of participants in this conference, which is way beyond <laughs> anything we expected. Um, let's just get started. Uh, my name is Alejo Stark. I'm a grad student at the University of Michigan in philosophy and Romance languages. Um, welcome everyone again now to our second day of the conference. Um, some of you might know that this conference, Reading Out to Politically, uh, began yesterday. Uh, we had a full day um, at our theoretical laboratory, as we called it, um, in which we had three separate sessions, uh, mostly with grad students uh, and younger scholars. Uh, not to say that anybody presenting today is going to be an older uh, person, but you know, uh, definitely younger scholars and grad students presenting their amazing set of papers uh, and presentations. We're actually really happy how everything turned out and we're excited uh, to continue that uh, today. Um, uh, as fellow uh, conference uh, co-organizer David Marusella mentioned yesterday, this conference grew out of a reading group, uh, an auto ser reading group uh, that was kicked off and organized by Alex Gorman uh, late, uh, late last year, in September of last year. And the group started with just a dozen, uh, dozens of people, uh, I think almost like 50 people joined the first day and it quickly shrunk to just the five of us. Hopefully that's not a bad reflection on us. Uh, but uh, the core group of us, uh, David, Alex, uh, that I just mentioned, but also Justin Radin and Brendan Rome, um, uh, as well as myself, uh, decided at one point that it might be cool to have a conference and discuss some of our own work. Um, and by the time we each emailed two of our contacts, we had almost a list of 10 people to present, uh, many of which will be presenting today. Um, so having said that, though, I want to give a special shout out to uh, fellow conference co-organizer, Brendan Rome, who put in, uh, I would say, most of the work, probably all the work to make this possible. So really thank you, Brendan, uh, for making this possible. Um, so after much coordination and trying to pick a date and a time, right, uh, with speakers from all over the world, we settled on March 7 and March 8. Uh, today, as many of you know, is uh, International Working Women's Day, which of course marks a key moment in the history of the uh, February Revolution of 1917 uh, and worker struggles everywhere. Um, today, of course, we're in the midst of a growing and powerful feminist movement across the globe, from uh, cities in Argentina to the United States and Poland um, that is disrupting the circuit of reproduction as such, right? Uh, I think that several interventions today will speak to the political and theoretical significance of these struggles uh, in our conjuncture. Um, and I'm sure and I hope that many of you uh, will also be part of the strike in whatever way or capacity you are able to uh, today. I'm just gonna share a link in the chat with you all uh, that highlights some of the strike actions uh, across the world uh, happening today. For today's panels, we'll have about 20 minutes uh, for each speaker uh, and then we'll have an hour or so for discussion. Uh, if you have questions, please type question in the chat uh, and we'll see it as organizers, just like that. And we'll call on you in the order that we uh, receive the questions. Um, for the morning panel uh, today, we're lucky to have three really amazing speakers uh, share their work with us. Um, the last uh, who will present is Natalia Rome, um, and then Panagioti Sotiris uh, will present second, and then first would be Vittori Morfino. Let me present them uh, first before we get started. Natalia, who, as I just said, will present last, will be presenting a paper titled Toward a Trans Individual Feminism, Social Reproduction, Plural Temporality, and the Real of History. Dr. Natalia Rome is a professor and researcher at the Gino Germani Research Institute uh, in the Faculty of Buenos Aires, in the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Buenos Aires, where she coordinates uh, the program of critical studies in ideology, techniques, and politics. Among her published works are For Theory, Althusser and the Politics of Time, as well as La Posición Materialista, uh, The Materialist Position, as well as uh, several books uh, that she edited on uh, the reception of Althusser uh, in Latin America and abroad. Secondly, uh, we will have Panagio de Sotiris, who will present a paper titled Traces, Promises, and Islets of Communism, Althusser's Political Metaphors Revisited, 
Dr. Sotiris is a professor of the Hellenic Open University. He's also a journalist, journalist, as well as a member in the editorial board of the Historical Materialism Journal. Among his books are Crisis Movement Strategy, The Greek Experience, and more recently, A Philosophy for Communism, Rethinking Althusser. And first presenting will be Vittorio Morfino with a paper titled, Are There One or Two Aleatory Materialisms? Dr. Morfino is a professor of the history of philosophy at the University of Milan Bicocca and director of the program at the Collège Internationale de Philosophie in Paris. He has published extensively on Spinoza, Machiavelli, Marx, German ideals, and Leibniz and Althusser. Among his books are Plural Temporality, Trans Individuality and the Aleatory between Spinoza and Althusser, The Spinoza Machiavelli Encounter, and the edited volume, The Government of Time. So with that, uh, I welcome uh, Vittorio Morfino uh, to our conference. So thank you very much for the presentation, Alejo. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you to discuss uh, of Althusser. So to, under the, to answer the question, whether there are one or two aleatory materialism, I retook in my hands some text I have written concerning Althusser's writings in the, of the 80s. First of all, the introduction I wrote with Luca Pinzola to the first Italian translation of some text of the 80s uh, with the title On Aleatory Materialism. Then an article I published on the journal Quaderni Materialisti with the title Althusser's Materialisms of the Rain, a lexicon, which I wrote in the hope of revealing the systematic structure that can be retraced with the fragmentary nature, within the fragmentary nature of these writings. And finally, an intervention dedicated to the underground current in a conference that took place in Venice in 2004. For reason of time, it is not possible to enter in the details of these texts. To summarize, further the development outlined in my introduction and in the two essay, my answer to the question I gave as title uh, was that uh, there are one or two uh, aleatory materialism, materialism was that there was only one aleatory materialism in continuity with the Althusserian thought of the 60s. And not only. When I found in some unpublished, unpublished texts from the 60s that Althusser had used certain categories like conjunction, encounter, and take hold, I ended back up. I, I, end, I ended back. Sorry, I ended up backdating aleatory materialism to the 60s. Now, however, I'm asking myself whether this was the right way to think the problem, and whether it is not necessary to first take into consideration the role of these categories in the theoretical context of the 60s and then confront them with the thought of the 80s. Let us first take into consideration the context in which these categories emerge in the text from the 60s. They seem to shed light on the question of the disjunction established in reading capital between genesis and structure. In other words, the disjunction between the theory of the body of the actual structure of society and the theory of bourgeois society as a, an historical result. It seems to me that Althusser introduced the concept of encounter and conjunction to solve two problems in his theory that may have a common origin. Firstly, his insistence on the Marxian term Verbindung which is translated as a combination, but thought of as combinatory, did not allow him to think of the constitutive nature of relations. And secondly, and concurrently, did not allow him to clearly conceptualize an alternative to the concept of genesis, which he, however, openly refused. I would like to address these two problems in turn in the following paragraphs. 
firstly, in the object of capital, he stresses Marx's use of the term Verbindung to think the relations of production beyond any model of intersubjectivity. A Verbindung, a distribution, is, I quote, a certain attribution of the means of production to the agents of production in a certain regular proportion fixed between, on one end, the means of production and on the other, the agent of production. I quote, by combining or interrelating these different ele elements, we reach a definition of the different modes of production which have existed and can exist in human history." End of quote. Here Althusser adds an important remark. This verbindung of the pre-existing determinate elements would, I quote, sincerely and truly constitute a combinatory, end of quote. In the second edition from uh, 1968, Althusser fine-tunes his analysis, affirming that this operation, I quote, might make us think of a combinatory, but that the specific nature of the relations put into play from these different combinations defined and strictly limit the field. I quote, to obtain the different mode of productions, these different elements do have to be combined, but by using specific modes of combination or verbindungen, which are only meaningful in the peculiar nature of the result of the combinatory." End of quote. Why did Althusser make this correlation? We can suppose that the translation of the term verbindung with combination and Althusser's further reading of this in terms of a combinatory of elements could make one think of a pre-existence of the elements which then enter into different relations in different modes of production. The correction Althusser introduces in the second edition of Reading Capital seems to aim at avoiding the risk of thinking of invariable elements combined in different ways in different modes of production. Regarding the second problem, we can list a series of texts, including the little note on Genesis, the letters to the Actin, and the humanist controversy. In these texts, the reason for the absence of the concept of Genesis appears in full light. In a letter to the Actin dated 22 August 1966, Althusser insisted at length on the question. I quote, Whoever says Genesis says the reconstitution of the process through which a phenomenon A has actually been engendered. That reconstitution is itself a process of knowledge. It has a meaning only if it reproduces the real process that engendered the phenomenon A. You will see immediately that whoever says Genesis says from the outset that the process of knowledge is identical in all its parts and in their order of succession to the actual process of engendering. This immediate and total overlap implies the idea that the subject of the real or actual process is a single and same subject identifiable from the origin of the process to the end, end of quote. The genesis paradigm therefore implies a kind of organic unity between the concept of process of generation, origin of the process, goal or end of the process, identity of the subject of the process of generation. Unity impregnated by the reference to an experience, the experience of generation, be it that, I quote, of the child who becomes an adult or that of a seed that becomes a vegetal or a living being, end of quote. In the genetic model, the individual we find at the end of the process, which we are confronted with, is already present in the seed. According to Althusser, this makes the structure of if genesis teleological. I quote, every genetic thought is literally obsessed by the search for a birth, 
with all that is entailed by the ambiguity of that word, which presupposes the idea that what is to be observed in its very birth already bears its name, already possesses its identity, already exists in some manner before its own birth in order to be born. Althusser adds that the concept of genesis, and with any geological concepts, recognizes misunderstanding, that is to say, designates a reality by covering it with a false knowledge, an illusion. The reality that the concept of genesis misunderstands is the emergence of the phenomenon A, radically new compared to all that precedes its own emergence. In a short note, written exactly one month later on 22 September 66, entitled On Genesis, Althusser gave a name to this new logic, which he meant to replace the logic built around the ideological religious category of Genesis. He called it the theory of the encounter or the theory of the conjunction. A privileged example, as in the letter to the Actin, is the logic of the constitution of the capitalist mode of production. I quote, the element defined by Marx combine. I prefer to say, in order to translate the term Verbindung, that they conjoin by taking hold in a new structure. The structure cannot be thought in its eruption at the effect of affiliation. It must be thought at the effect of a conjunction. Yet each of the elements that come to be combined in the conjunction of a new structure, in this case to hand accumulated money capital, free labor power, that is labor power divested of its work tools and the technological invention, is itself as such a product, an effect. What is important in Marx's demonstration is that the free elements are not contemporaneous products of one and the same situation. In other words, it is not the feudal mode of production which by itself, thanks to a providential finality, simultaneously engenders the free elements required for the new structure to take hold. Each of these elements has its own history or genealogy. The free genealogies are relatively independent. Thus, the genealogies of the free elements are independent of each other and independent of the, of the existing structure. This exclude, excludes all possibility of a resurgence of the myth of Genesis." End of quote. The plurality of genealogies in this passage indicates precisely the op opposite of Genesis. That is, it indicates the emergence of a plurality of elements that coexist, but which are not contemporary effects of the same situation. We can find a similar critic of the concept of genesis in the humanist controversies, picking up on the debate about the recent discoveries of human paleontology. Here, the reference is to Leroy Guram and his theory that the ancestor of the human line is a being that, while only having a modestly developed brain, has the distinctive particularity of an upright position and free hands for making instruments under conditions which are social and not individual. These discoveries would seem to fill in the gap separating current human society from the animal origins of the human species, because from its origins onwards, the human species would be constituted by beings who lived together and produce, produced rudimentary instruments. In this regard, Althusser cites Suret Canal, who on the basis of Leroy Guram's theory claimed that social labor is the original cause of humanization. Criticizing this position on the question of anthropogenesis, Althusser focused on the spontaneous persistence of a conception that cannot resist associating materialisms and genesis. Genesis signifies filiation. It signifies that we are dealing with one individual whose transformation we can follow in the spontaneous form of an empiricism that waves a continuous thread. 
just as it seems to break with a genetic scheme, the genesis of man from ape introduces another genetic scheme within the human kingdom, which identified the originary individual. Althusser opposes a theory of the encounter against this schema of the originary, the privileged example of which is again the capitalist mode of production as the result of a process that does not have the form of a genesis. Remaining within the metaphor of filiation, he writes, we must go much farther and say that the sons who count in the historical process have no father because they need several. And these fathers are in their turn, the sons not of a single father, but of several. End of quote. As we have seen, as we have seen, the critic of the concept of genesis is constantly accompanied by the historical example of primitive accumulation. The other example found on to serve text is that of the unconscious. In the letter to the Actin from 22 August 66, he writes, when one wants to think through the genesis of the unconscious, one starts with the result within knowledge namely the existence of that identified individual called the unconscious. And elaborating the genesis of the unconscious consists in moving back to its birth, to the point at which one witnesses its birth, but one manage, all manages only with difficulty to rid oneself of the idea that in a certain way, to elaborate the genesis of the unconscious means to seek out, even before its birth, all that already prefigures and announces it, already contains it in person, even in the form of a draft, but that resembles it and that is already it, that already bears its name, that is already identifiable. One of the greatest difficulty conceiving that prior to the unconscious, absolutely nothing exists that resembles to the unconscious. One always tends to recognize it in germs as a promised draft elements prefiguration before its own birth, precisely because one conceives its eruption in the form of the birth. Althusser thus rejects the concept of genesis and birth in favor of concepts such as encounter, taking gold, conjunction. We can take as an example this passage from, from the three notes on discourse theory. I quote, we can set out the elements which are present and proceed over the conjunction that take holds in the form of the unconscious. The elements involved exist in the char character of the familial theater the familial situation, an ideolo ideological situation in which are produced as constitutive of this situation, the effects of the articulation of the mother's and father's unconscious with and in the structure of this ideological situation. Unconsciouses articulated with the ideological, unconsciouses articulated with each other by way of their articulation with the ideological. This is what constitutes the situation that precedes over the establishment of the unconscious in the child." End of quote. It is interesting to remark that the concept of the void that is present, of course, uh, is central in the text of the 80s, also has a role between the set of the concepts used to substitute the scheme of the genesis, but in very precise way, as determinate absence. I quote, I believe, uh, writes Althusser, you will agree with the very general principle that absence possesses a certain efficacy on the condition, to be sure, that is that it be not absence in general, nothingness or any other Heideggerian openness, but a determinate absence playing a role in the space of its absence, end of quote. One might perhaps advance the hypothesis that this theory of the encounter intervenes in these texts of the 60s as the rectification 
of the formalist theory of structural causality, or at least the potential risk of such a theory. In other words, it seems to me that the functioning of the theory of structural causality is secured by three theses. One, the thesis of the constitutiveness of relations. Two, the thesis of the primacy of the encounter over the form. Three, and the thesis of plural or differential temporality. Now, these three theses must be thought in an intertwined fashion. In fact, thesis one without thesis two produces the reversibility of genesis and structure or the impossibility of thinking the becoming of the structure. Thesis two without thesis three lets to think the encounter as a discontinuous event in a unique timeline. And thesis three without thesis one ends up thinking a multiplicity of unrelated times. Finally, we can address the content of the writings from the 80s, where a series of concepts persist, encounter taking old constitutive relations. This persistence may make us think that we are dealing with the same materialism of the 60s, and the privileged example of primitive accumulation also returns, even if the reference to psychoanalysis and the unconscious disappear completely. I would argue that this conceptual constellation constitutes, constitutes one of the two tendencies present in these writings, namely what I would call the materialist tendency. Indeed, beside this concept, we find other, others whose history of appearance in Althusser thought remains to be written. For example, the Deleuzean concept of rhizome, the Epicurean concept of interstice, or the pair margin, margin center. Allow me to quote a passage of the thesis of June on the rhizome and interstice. I quote, the world is now an impredictable flow. If we want to give an image, we must go back to Heraclitus, or uh, we do not bath twice in the same river, or, or, or Epicurus, primacy of void on the atomic corpuscle. If we want to give a closer image following in this Delos, we must not represent the world according to Descartes as a hierarchical tree, but rather as a rhizome. For me, I would prefer another image that of uh, Marx. The gods exist in the interstice of the world of Epicurus. Of, of Epicurus. He had it. In the same way, commercial relations existed in the interstice of the slave world. I would say the same thing. Communist relation, communism is the end of the relations of economic uh, um, exploitation, the end of state domination, and the end of ideological mystification. Exist, communist relations exist in the interstice of the imperialist world. And here a passage on the per mar margin center. Marx said the proletariat camps on the margins of bourgeois society, and he put it in the center, at the earth of the class struggle of bourgeois society. What was Marx doing? He made of the margin center. The problem today is formally the same. You have to make the margin the center. End of quote. Of course, the use of these concepts, although rare and episodic, sketches a different tendency than the one we have designated as, as the materialist one, which is rooted in the 60s problematic and which we could define as eschatological to the extent that it, on the one hand, rejects the hierarchical structure of the whole, which means at the same time the temporal complexity of the conjuncture, and on the other, as a, co uh, as a consequence of this, affirms communism as a simple parousia to come. It's the last page. 
In this sense, the illuminating concept of the conflicting presence of these two tendencies in the, uh, in the text of the 80s is precisely that of void. It is an expression of the materialist tendency if thought in a triangulation with the concept of clinamen and atomic elements. We could say that void, clinamen, and atoms are the conceptual tools that render a theory of a counter or of a conjunction thinkable. And within these conceptual relations, it expresses the simple rejection of the anteriority of the logos, of the genesis. Nevertheless, when it is thought in connection with the concept of world, it becomes an expression of the, of the eschatological tendency. Of course, there are some passages in which the two tendencies intersect each other. Here is an, a pure example. I quote, I simply want to say that this world, empty of any assured and stable structure, empty of theory, depoliticized to the extreme, I simply want to say that this world offers itself and that it is to take. I studied the theme of fortune, the good occasion in Machiavelli, and I, I came to the conclusion that fortune in its higher form is the void, the absence of obstacles, end of quote. If we try to lend systematicity to this set of concepts, forcing them perhaps, it seems to me that they shape the second tendency present in the writings on aleatory materialism, a tendency which predominates in the writing of 85-86, an eschatological tendency in which the void must become full, the margins center, the interstices words, where absence does not have a determinate character, but is rather the expectation of a full parousia, which the theory of structural causality of the 60s had considered as both impossible and, and imaginary. I came rapidly to the conclusion. To conclude, I propose the following, following interpretative schema. If we take the writings of the 80s as a whole, something that Luca Pinzol and I did by publishing them with the title On Aleatory Materialism, we can find the, re the re-elaboration of the material deposits in two different temporal streams. The first one, which comes from the year 66, 67, I would call it the materialist tendency. The second from the years 76, 78, the eschatological tendency. One can perhaps ascribe to the first tendency the new elaboration of the materials lived by a second stream coming from the beginning of the 17th with the courses on Machiavelli and Rousseau and the text on imperialism. Of course, the two tendencies produce a tension which traverses the writings and the concept of these years, a tension that can perhaps explain the different, if not opposing interpretation the writings of these years have produced. However, perhaps it is possible to take a step farther and risk an hypothesis that could only be proven with precise and rigorous work on these texts a part of which has not yet, yet been published. What do, one could try a more precise periodization of these writings by saying that in the writings of the 82, there is a dominance of the materialist tendency, whereas in the writings of 85, 86, there is a dominance of the eschatological tendency. Sorry to, 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 to again uh, over the limits of time. No, thank you so much, Vittorio, uh, for your talk. Uh, and now we will have um, Panagioti Sotiris presenting his paper, Traces, Promises, and Islets of Communism, Althusser's Political Metaphors uh, Revisited. Uh, Panagiotis. OK, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for this uh, opportunity. And uh, at least the part of yesterday's workshop I, 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 wa I watched uh, was uh, really fascinating, uh, really good to see a kind of uh, 
a younger generation of research, really creative, going back into Althusser. So I'm going to deal with some of the metaphors uh, Althusser used uh, in the 19, especially in the 1970s, in regards in regards to the emergence of communist communist forms within capitalist societies. In a certain way, I am going to also follow the, this tension that Vittorio also uh, discussed uh, before. Now, let's begin. Now, in 1976, uh, Louis Althusser delivered a lecture at the Catalan in College of Building Engineers and Technical Architects. In the Spanish translation of the text that appeared in, in a collection of Althusser's text in 1978 in Barcelona, there's a reference to esbozos y sintomas de comunismo, outlines and symptoms of communism, although we do not know whether this was actually in the original or was it a, a translation choice. When Althusser incorporated parts of this text in Le Vache Noir, one of his unpublished manuscripts from the 1970s, he referred to esquisse et promesse de communisme, outlines and promises of communism. In the archives, there is also another first another French version of the text that refers to esquisse et trace de communism, outlines and traces of communism. In Le Vas Noir, we also find another metaphor that would reappear in Althusser texts, islets of communism already exist in the world. And moreover, in an interview that Althusser gave to Rosanna Rosanda, he speaks of virtual forms of communism emerging in those forms of associations that escape commodity relationships. I think that all of these metaphors point to a preoccupation with how communist forms emerge within capitalist societies. However, there are some open questions in regards to these metaphors. Do they point to a quasi metaphysical conception of the communist mode of production emerging out of the capitalist one? which would make it a variation of the historicist idea of the necessary succession of modes of production or the idea that every mode of production carries the seeds of its own Aufhebung. And in what sense do uh, communist elements exist as traces or outlines or symptoms or uh, promises or uh, islets? And how are these related to any theory of transition and revolution? I think that uh, one starting point to discuss uh, this is to revisit a manuscript from Althusser from 1973 entitled The Book on, on Imperialism, recently uh, translated, recently both published in French and translated into English. Because it offers one of Althusser's most elaborate attempts to uh, present a theory of modes of production and of transition. His starting point is the, is the primacy of the relations of production over the forces of production and consequently the centrality of class struggle. However, Althusser insists that the socialist mode of production does not exist, but that in contrast, and I quote, the capitalist mode of production exists and the communist mode of production exists. Now, uh, Bedelem used this also as the main promise of his class struggles in the USSR, and also Balibar would base on this his argument in his book on the dictatorship of the proletariat, namely the idea that socialism is a period of transition marked by intensified class struggle and the contradictory coexistence of two opposing modes of production, the capitalist one and the emerging communist. However, the interesting thing is that Althusser suggests that the communist mode of production exists from the moment the capitalist mode of production comes into existence. And I quote from Althusser, hence the question, when does communism begin to exist understood as elements or seeds, but seeds in the sense of seeds capable of producing elements? Question mark, answer. From the moment the capitalist mo mode of production exists, the answer is however too generic and is abstract, yet it means that the capitalist mode of production contains the seeds of the communist mode of production in its own contradictions from the moment it comes into existence." End of quote. Althusser suggests that this is the result of the continuous effectivity of class antagonism inscribed in the capitalist relation of production and suggests that an element of decomposition and disintegration of the capitalist mode of production is always present from the beginning. Again, I quote from Althusser. 
This antagonism exists from the origin on and from the origin on produces effects of decomposition because of its antagonism, class struggle, which affects the forms of existence of the capitalist mode of production, division of labor, organization of labor, the family, and other ideological state apparatuses. And here is how Althusser describes or designates these communist elements, these communist seeds. And yet again, uh, allow me a, a quote from Althusser. The forms in which communist elements appear in capitalist society itself are countless. Marx himself names a whole series of them, from forms of children's education combining work and schooling to the new relations reigning in proletarian organizations, the proletarian family, the proletarian community of life and struggle, joint stock companies, workers' cooperatives, and so on, to say nothing of the socialization of production, which poses all sorts of problems yet should also be noted. All these elements, which have multiplied in the past few years, especially since 1968, will not by themselves lead to communism better. They are not all element, communist elements. They are elements for communism. Communism will adopt them, combine them, perfect them, and develop their potentiality. Actually, the French word is virtualité uh, in, in the plural, integrating them into the revolution in the relations of production, which commands everything and is still absent from our world. Communism, however, will not come about by itself. It has to be built at the end of a long march, one stage of which is called socialism, which is not a mode of production. I think this is a very important description uh, especially the part that Althusser insists that we're not dealing with communist elements, but elements for communism, along with the insistence that communism will be the outcome of a long period of transition. Now, uh, following that, Althusser, uh, by means of a refutation of any theory of simple commodity production or theory of the mercantile mod mode of production, finds the opportunity to return to what he defines as the pseudo mode of socialist production. And he insists again, and I quote, in the socialist social formation that coexist in contradictory faction, fashion, elements belonging to the capitalist relation of production and elements preparing for the communist relation of production. But what are these? Here is again Althusser's answer, and again a quote. The latter is prepared by collective ownership of the means of production and by a whole series of arrangements. The plan guarantees that control the labor market, a wage structure that tends to reduce wage differentials, and generally speaking, organizational measures that tend to prepare communal forms of the management of enterprises and of the nation. Measures that aim to attenuate and then to do away with the division of labor, the division between mental and manual labor, the division between town and country, and so on. This is the end uh, of the quote. Now, uh, so it, it, it's interesting to see how Althusser finds, on the one hand, elements for communism in, in collective practices, such as proletarian collective practice, but also tries to see a certain tendency towards what traditionally has been called socialization of production within capitalism as, as a more, as a, as a uh, and also as part of, of, of socialism. And it's interesting how uh, even the communist elements within socialism are especially described as uh, measures that try to do away with the division of labor, something that we also will find later in Balibar. Now, for Althusser, this suggests a broader non-historicist conception of the possibility, but also of the non-possibility of a mode of production, something that is one of the trademarks of the materialism of the encounter. Now, this relation of existence to non-existence points to a conception of history as an open-ended process, stressing the contingent character of any process of revolutionary change. Thus, one might say that the entire problematic of the socialist transi transition should not be considered in the sense of building socialism, but in terms of a theory and experimental practice of the conditions for the existence and the conditions for the non-existence of communist relations and forms within transition for processes conditioned by class struggle. 
So that, that's why I think it's important how uh, Althusser stresses the need, and I quote from him, to compare the cases of existence with the cases of non-existence and think the conditions of existence setting out from the conditions of non-existence. I think that this points to Althusser thinking the failures of actually existing socialism, and by means of this, rethinking how the communist elements or the elements for communism can be transformed into lasting communist social forms, and the contradictory character of any such transition process, the constant confrontation between capitalist and co communist relations and forms, the uneven class struggles involved, and the way that this process is far from being predetermined. And consequently, and I quote from Althusser, the question of the existence of a mode of production in a social formation is posed only as a function of this contradictory couple, conditions of its non-existence, conditions of its existence, end of quote. However, again, at this point, Althusser insists that the elements from communism can be transformed into communist social forms only after a long process of struggle. Consequently, I think that the theoretical line that we can find in the book of imperialism on imperialism is a conceptualization of the potential communist mode of production in terms of the contradictory and antagonistic coexistence of, of capitalist and communist relations in a transition period that can only be described as a long march of constant struggle and experimentation. This is a conception that we find some years later echoed in Balibar's book on the dictatorship of the proletariat. And I quote from Balibar, socialism as an historical process can only develop on the basis of a profound progressive transformation of the division of labor on the basis of a conscious political struggle against the division of manual and intellectual labor against narrow specialization for what Marx called all around competence. Socialism is a process in the course of which the condition of the proletariat becomes generalized at the same time that it is transformed and tends to disappear. This, in both, this is, in both senses of the term, the end point of the formation of the proletariat." End of quote. However, there is also another tendency in Althusser's thinking of the emergence of potential communist forms. And this has to do with the notion of the margin. Now, as Vittorio already uh, mentioned, Althusser always referred to Marx's passage in volume one of Capital about commodity relations emerging in the interstices of pre-capitalist modes of production. And I uh, quote from Marx, trading nations properly so-called exist in the unseen world only in the interstices like the gods of Epicurus in the Intermundia. Now, of course, this can be read as a non-historicist conception of the emergence of social forms of potential, potential and agonistic forms of production and as part of a materialism of the encounter. However, we can also find another sense of the margin and things become slightly more complex. Now, an important segment of the 1976 manuscript, How to be a Marxist in Philosophy, also published in France and translated into English, is dedicated to a discussion of the image of the margin. Now, Althusser attempts to rethink how different philosophical systems include a notion of order, but also a notion of the limits of this order. And Althusser turns towards Derrida. And here is a big quote from Althusser, but I think it, it's rather significant. It's Althusser discussing Derrida. Derrida has very convincingly shown that we must look to the margin for the answer to the question of a limit that is not a limit. Everybody knows what a margin is. There is one on this very page, an empty space alongside a full one. You would think that fullness could not do with emptiness and the other way around. This presupposes a limit between the two, of course, but a limit that is not an order or at any rate does not derive from an order since we can vary the margin and thus the limit. It makes no difference whether the margin is two centimeters wide or three. It's enough to come to an agreement with a compositor and you're all set. Derrida has seen then that this play matters to the margin quite as much as the margin matters to the limit. But this play of course changes everything since it is free, not constrained. Thus it frees itself 
and phrases of all order, flat or round, monist or dualist, or even twisted. It's a rather significant passage. However, Althusser does not limit himself to this appreciation of Derrida's conception of the margin or to a, a dialogue uh, with this version, one might say, of, 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 of Derrida's thinking. For Althusser, the margin becomes central in an almost poetic thinking of the emergence of new social forms and communist virtualities. And again, allow me a rather big quote from Althusser, but again, it is significant. The margin is now beginning to sustain our hopes after being subjected to our despair. For what is in the margin is marginal, the mad, children, deviants, philosophers, the mentally ill, deranged or normal artists, the abnormal and so on. And it turns out that once normality has been demystified, one suddenly realizes that interesting things go on in the vicinity of the margin. Uh, on the margin of official society where the exploited workers and the immigrant workers are together with children from whose mouths the truth has long come and artists from the greatest to the humblest with Breton and his friends in between and the poor in spirit when they are saints, even if they do not know it and the mad and certain prisoners Soviet and Latin American prisoners in particular, and so on. The margin is also the beach, on the one on which everyone will alight to enjoy the sand after we have at last crossed this terrible river of socialism in the boat of the dictatorship of the proletariat. And then we shall have the free reign of the margin on the beach of communism. It's even more poetic uh, if you have the book. Now, it's interesting, however, that Althusser insists that this emergence of new social forms at the margins is something that is already happening, that is not just some type of utopian thinking. And again, I quote, the margin is no utopia. It exists today well and truly in reality, witness not just Derrida's theory, but the existence of all the marginal thoughts in the official statistics or not. It exists and is developing in every country. Yes, in every country and even the USSR. I shall explain to you someday. Unfortunately, I do not have the time today." End of quote. Now, leaving aside these uh, uh, poetic uh, uh, overtones, this is uh, that run through this, this manuscript, which since it was not prepared for publication, also sometimes goes on, on, certain, on a certain ruminating mode expressed in it. It's interesting how uh, Althusser attempted to think through this idea of elements of communism emerging in struggles and movements. It, it gives a much more positive sense to these elements for communism. However, what is missing with regard to the formulation regarding communist elements in, book, in the book on imperialism is this idea of a long march. Of, a, of processes, of struggles, confrontations, of experimentation, of a transitional period of intensified class struggles after revolutionary uh, rapture. Now, uh, I think that uh, at that period also Althusser concentrated also in his public interventions on another crucial aspect that perhaps can help us explain the imagery of the margin in the unpublished text from the same period, that is the second half of the 1970s. This is the fact that uh, many of the popular initiatives that represented for him a hopeful way out of the crisis of the communist movement were happening outside the official parties and trade uh, union. Uh, and I quote here from the 1977 intervention at the, at the conference Congress in Venice, in the East, as in the West, we are confronted with the grave problem of the relation existing between these organizations and the state, with a problem in the East of the fusion of these organizations with the state and open fusion, with a problem in the West of the risk of fusion, because the bourgeois state never stops trying to integrate the organizations of class struggle of the working class into its own operations, often with success. End of quote. Consequently, Althusser, in the same text, the text of his 1977 Venice intervention, insists that uh, how can relations be established with the, with the mass movement which, transcending the traditional distinction between trade union and party, will permit the development of initiatives among the people which usually fail to fit into the division between the economic and political spheres and even, even added together? Question mark. 
because we're witnessing more and more mass movements of the people arising by themselves outside of the trade unions and parties, bringing or capable of bringing something indispensable to the struggle. So we might suggest that the margin is in a certain way, Althusser's uh, attempt to suggest the difficulty posed by the fact that the autonomous initiatives of the masses emerge outside the traditional organizational and political forms associated with the working class movement. Thus, the reference to communist movements, communist forms, sorry, actually emerging in the margins or interstices, or the reference to communist islets emphasizes the dynamic of these elements, even in a manner that overlooks the question of the organizational forms. Perhaps this is Althusser's way of pointing to the radical political and organizational novelty and ingenuity required to transform the traces of communism into a feasible strategy for communism. However, at least in some of the interventions, Althusser seems to turn more towards a conception of communism already existing in the interstices of contemporary societies. A 1980 letter that uh, Bill Lewis found and presented uh, as part of a special series at the NEC archives offers an almost poetic vision of an already existing uh, communism and uh, for those interested in the biography of Althusser, it, it coincides with Althusser's visit in Greece uh, in April of 1980. And I quote from this letter, communism exists today in all places where, one, there's no commodity relationship, two, there, therefore no economic exploitation, three, therefore no political domination, four, therefore no ideological servitude or intimidation, it exists everywhere in the world, in the islets of friendship, between all the friends that love each other and talk about what interests them, between all the children that play, between all the men that play football or other games where it is about winning by respecting the rules of the game without hurting anyone. Communism is respect for others when all relations of exploitation, domination and intimidation have been suppressed or suspended." End of quote. And the same tone emerges in all the accounts we have from Althusser's intervention in a debate at Terni in Italy, again in April uh, 1980. And we have from uh, Christian Logiacono a reconstruction of this intervention. And I quote from uh, uh, Logiacono. Communism exists everywhere, even here today in Terni or in a church or in a field where football is played, there, are, there, are, there where real relationships are created, islets of communism characterized by three conditions, no economic exploitation, no pressure from political power, no ideological servitude. Otherwise, Althusser adds, socialism is crap. Communism is not eclipsed. On the contrary, the future is played out in our head on condition of defeating all paper tigers or misconceptions. And uh, anyone has seen the video clip of uh, Althusser's uh, interview with Rai uh, at the end uh, of April 1980. You uh, find basically the same phrasing. So it's interesting. This is Althusser from April 1980, the, the Althusser of, of communism actually existing in the interstices and the islets of communism. Now, uh, one might say that this idea of the islets of communism emerging in contemporary capitalist societies combined with the emphasis on the actual strength of popular initiatives, which is a very important thing in, in all the writings of Althusser after the second half of the 1970s, even through to the 1980s, th there's always this very, very positive image of very strong autonomous popular uh, movements. In, in a certain way, there is the crisis of Marxism, the crisis of the communist movement, but not necessarily a defeat of, of popular uh, initiatives. This is something also to be taken into consideration. So I suggest that this is his attempt to escape the difficulty of rethinking the political, theoretical, and ideological conditions to overcome the deep crisis of the existing communist parties and mass organizations. Now, another interesting reference is how Althusser links the notion of the margin to the notion of underdetermination which we find it in a 1984 letter to Fernanda uh, Navarro as part of the preparation of that book or interview uh, that came out of this uh, dialogue. 
And I quote from Althusser, of course, there are, as you say, possibilities within social determination, if only because there are several different orders of social determination and because this creates a play of gaps, blank spaces or margins in which the subject may find his path determined or not determined by social constraints. But this non-determination is an effect, a sub-effect of determination of determinations, what I called not only over-determination, but under-determination. Now, we know that uh, Etienne Balibar in his, uh, has suggested that uh, underdetermination must be read as suggesting a philosophical program to think besides the necessity of contingency, also the contingent of this con contingence, the underdetermined multiplicity of possibles of tendencies that coexist within the same event. And I think that uh, apart from the broader implication that the notion of underdetermination has for any theorization of historical dynamics that do not manage to reach a certain threshold of determination, it also points to the very unevenness and difficulty of any attempt to transform subaltern resistances and aspirations into a historical initiative capable of social change. Uh, and I think that in this sense, contrary to some of Althusser's more enthusiastic passages, Suggest. The communist elements and the interstices or the margins and the islets of communism point to both the possibility and impossibility of communism. They point to dynamics that are constantly reproduced, but also to counter dynamics and political, ideological and institutional obstacles thereto, beginning with the weight of previous defeats. And this weight of defeats is something always absent from the thinking of Althusser, especially from the second half of the 1970s onwards. And this can explain both the constant observation of such traces of communism and at the same time, all of the effects of miscognition, disorientation, disillusionment and disaggregation of the subaltern classes and groups. And I think this tension running through such references by Althusser points to both an attempt to rethink communism as the limit of class antagonism and the constant resistance and struggle inscribed at the heart of capitalist relations of production. And on the other hand, to a desire to bypass the complex political labor of creating the conditions to turn these elements into these new social forms. So uh, I would describe the tension in the following sense. On the one hand, we have Althusser indeed expanding his original political theoretical project of recreating the possibility of a fusion between the working class and Marxism by means of a radical renewal of the communist movement, even th through new movements outside official communist parties. On the other hand, however, we have the extent of the rupture between the subaltern classes and both Marxist theory and communist political organization, something that leads Althusser to a conception of the encounter as almost chance including this imagery of islets of communism, which is in a certain way, and um, perhaps we can discuss it in the, uh, more, closer to Derrida's suggestion of an eschatology without teleology, rather to a non-teleological materialism of the encounter, suggesting you know, uh, a, a political labor to enable such encounters. And I think to end, that it is the same tension that we found in, in, find in Althusser's constant return to Machiavelli. Now, Machiavelli for Althusser is an attempt to rethink, well, aware of that, a new practice of politics that is able to deal both in its overdetermination and underdetermination of the conjuncture in order to radically change the relations of forces. On the other hand, we sometimes find in Althusser's writing uh, on Machiavelli a conception of emancipatory politics as pure novelty, uh, as a rather radically novel yet solitary political act or gesture that initiates a new political sequence. I think uh, perhaps uh, it's interesting to see this tension and try to understand why Althusser never published Machiavelli and us, whether it was a really fully prepared manuscript. Perhaps this has to do with the weight of the realization that the need for a politics of radical novelty and the creations of the conditions for fortunate encounters between struggle, tragedy, and social dynamics could only be answered by a painful recomposition of the political organizations of the working class, a task beyond 
both a left-wing turn of the actually existing communist movement, but also beyond simply investing in the expansion of already existing islets of communism. To conclude, Althusser's references to traces or elements of communism point to both an indispensable starting point for a strategy for communism and the open questions associated with the very idea of a political practice with a communist horizon. Retracing the tensions running through Louis Althusser's confrontation with these questions means rethinking a challenge that is more actual and urgent than ever. Thank you. Thank you so much, Panagiotis. So continuing uh, the talks in this islet of communism we call the cloud or Zoom, uh, we have uh, Natalia Rome, who will be presenting her paper titled Toward a Trans-Individual Feminism, Social Reproduction, Plural Temporality, and the Real of History. Natalia? Well, it's a great pleasure for me to share this panel with your friends and colleagues. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to listen to some interventions, and I'm very happy to see that uh, the field of Althusserian studies is growing with young researchers. Uh, but as Alejo said, uh, today is 8 m so my intervention will be a tribute to my feminist colleagues in, uh, all over the world. Uh, so let me start with a question, uh, which is uh, the relevance of the Althusserian intervention today? That is, in what sense can the singular type of articulation between theoretical practices and political practices uh, be significant in the case of the challenges uh, we are currently facing? Uh, I think uh, there are two questions and any fair reader of Althusser will easily recognize. The first one is a series uh, of consequences of an ontological nature and a critique of metaphysics based on a rigorously materialist reading of the conjunction between philosophy and history in Marxist writing and in Marxist and non-Marxist political thought. Uh, the singular modulation offered by Althusser in this great question is to vehiculate the legacy of a theoretical Marxism for the 21st century, that is, the, that is to say, a spectral body capable of informing new analysis uh, of the historical conjecture of late capitalism with resources capable of dialoguing and debating with the intellectual frameworks of our own theoretical conjecture. Uh, this great question undoubtedly exceeds the boundaries of this writing and builds a polyphonic plot with, uh, in which the contributions of Balibar, Poulanza, Speches, uh, the debates with uh, Derrida and Foucault, among others, uh, are especially important. This great question uh, has three, uh, of course, it has many more, but uh, let me uh, make this uh, synthesis. <laughs> Uh, three singularly powerful dimensions for current critical theory because they offer us principles uh, from which uh, to, uh, to promote a process of critical revision of the current theoretical conjecture, uh, identifying risks, deviations, and, trace and tracing demarcations with respect to tendencies haunted by dominant ideological formations. Uh, these three principles uh, may be uh, for the, for the first place, a, a complex differential and non-contemporary theory of temporality and a plural and articulated conception of historical time capable of sustaining a solid theoretical critique of the cyclical and abstract experience of capitalist time and a critique of the specific conjectural form of the neoliberal ideology of time that we could call presentism without illusion of progress. Uh, secondly, a decentered topic uh, in order to think the social totality as a given complex whole uh, and the historical causality of a social formation and its conjectures, assuming uh, the complexity of the concrete in its overdetermined unity against the abstract forms of totality that tended to replace the materialist question for the historical causality and the nature of the social totality with pure categories such as discourse, power, ideology, hegemony, or with also abstract forms uh, of a renewed pluralist metaphysics uh, in solidarity with political spontaneism. 
uh, and third place, uh, anti-humanist and trans-individual materialism capable of producing a renewed critical exercise of the ontological and methodological individualism and of the metaphysical essentialisms of human nature. Related to this question, although traversed by, uh, by all of them, uh, is the other great question that, as I understand it, constitutes one of the strategic contribut uh, contributions that the Althusserian thought um, or Althusserian problematic can offer to, revital to revitalize the field of critical theory of the present. It is the old question of social reproduction. Uh, and especially of a positive theory of the structure of the ideological mechanism in its constitutive articulation with the concrete and complex whole of a social formation and its immanent relation to the overdetermined conjectures of social reproduction. A theory affirmed as an activity of persevering in the suspensive points of the change whose sense are all we have, to use a frequent uh, image of Althusser, uh, and that uh, Michel Pocheux uh, syn uh, synthesized as a theory capable of, retain of retaining at the same time two indispensable theses to remain in, in a materialist position, the, the primacy of struggle over classes and the primacy of the unconscious over consciousness. That is to say, a positive theory of the ideological whose development forms a unity with the effective critique of the dominant humanist ideological formation, as Althusser clearly states it in Marxism and Humanism. This singular situated and materialist epistemology consists in deriving positive theories from a defective critique of concrete formation. Uh, Balibar allows us to advance in the, analogy, in the analysis of the, this critical condition with his characterization of psychoanalysis and Marxist theory as, conflictive, uh, as conflicting sciences. Uh, in, uh, in them, he finds the key to understanding the type of relation established between objectivity and conflict that the Althusserian problematic seeks to make visible. Uh, Systematic sciences, says Balibar, determined in their constitution by the way in which they are inscribed in the conflict whose knowledge they represent. They are not spectators of an object, also a metaphor of subjectivity, but rather stakeholders in a conflictive process. I think that, the, that, that it is for the most interest that the crucial point at which Althusserian theory reveals this systemic conflictive condition is for Balivar, the point of his theory of reproduction. As he says, uh, and I quote, the, spe the specificity of the Althusserian concept of social reproduction produces for us the ambivalent effect of an opening of Marxist theory at the very moment in which literary Althusser does nothing more than show its limits. The specificity immediately communicates with what is undoubtedly, undoubtedly, uh, undoubtedly sorry, <laughs> Althusser's fundamental ontological proposal, which identifies in general and at all costs, the notion of struggle and existence. When Althusser develops his conception of reproduction, he reaches an idea that supposes a sort of contradiction, that all structural continuity is a necessary effect of an irreducible contingency in which at each moment resides the latent possibility of a crisis. Insofar as Althusser unfolds the complexity of the Marxist topic, uh, of which he recognizes its descriptive value, he points out its explanatory insufficiency and advances into the superstructural relations to find in them the space of class struggle and the eccentric determinations of the unconscious. The, argu the argument turns on itself, says Balibar, by virtue of the primacy of the relations, of the relations of production over the productive forces and of the superstructural relations as conditions of the existence of the infrastructure. And in this sense, I find it, uh, I find it interesting to, to, share, to suggest that the theory of social reproduction at the center of which Althusser places the enigma of the ideological allows us to deploy by another means the concept of decalage. Capital, says Althusser, and I quote, exactly measures a distance and an internal dislocation, the collage, uh, in the real, inscribed in its, in its structure, a distance and a dislocation such as to make their own effects themselves uh, uh, illegible. 
and the illusion of an immediate reading of them, the ultimate aspects uh, of their effects, fetishism. The reading of the real is a practice of combat in the terrain closed by idealist temporality. And the idealist tendency imposes itself in every act of indistinction of the specific of an order of determinations. That is, every time the tireless work of restituting the complex that encrypts that which is presented as the simple and immediate of an evidence stop. Such is the case of the autonomization of the question of power when it is presented separately from the problem of social reproduction, that is, from the question of the complex relation between time and structure that the category of overdetermination comes to indicate. We find in this way the question of social reproduction at the heart of uh, structural causality, and it is there in these suspended links of the Althusserian dialectic that Marx's legacy opens up to our current theoretical debates and to the critical thinking of our historical conjuncture. I believe that this twist that Bolivar underlines in Althusserian uh, thought uh, is what makes it at once unbearable for its time and simultaneously leaves it open, suspended, and current for our reading. Uh, it is the point of non-contemporaneity of the Althusserian problematic, the index of a, non uh, of a non relation that connects the theoretical conjecture of the 1960s uh, with those of the post 1980s. Uh, and I believe that it is strategic uh, for the development of the critique of our conjecture that we're able to place ourselves in that impasse. I am interested then in focusing on that zone of problems uh, that open to a specific temporality of theory as an analysis of the situation and which the third calls in Sur la Reproduction um, as the point of view of reproduction. It is in short another way of thinking the question of the presence of structure in its effects as an absent cause. The hollow space of the point of view of reproduction is indicated in the writing prior to 1968 in the terms of a, concept, uh, of a conceptual uh, hierarchization of the notion of conditions of the situation. For example, in Sur la dialectique materialiste, in Pour Marx, uh, which maintains an immediate, uh, an immanent relation both to structural causality and to the conception of plural, non contemporary, and unequally articulated historical time. This issue is often recognized in Althusser's post uh, 68's writings, in which one can read the Marxist theory is also fully involved in the struggle uh, of the workers' movement in, in, in its discoveries and its. Uh, and in its lacune uh, and contradictions, uh, and identify itself at the mark of abandonment of, of his theoristic uh, deviation. And yet, the idea insists early on uh, in the pages of Lire le Capital when Althusser says uh, that the only philosophers willing to consider capital uh, as an object worthy of the attention of philosophy would not be for a long time but militant Marxists. Well, uh, it is here that I would like to ask you a question. Which militants are there today who are revisiting the problem of the link between structure and conjecture, recovering in the debates uh, the abandoned Marxist question of historical causality and placing at, at, at its center the question of the concrete conditions of social reproduction? Who have taken up the enigma of the suspended connection between historical determinations and psychic and subjective dispositions? Who today plays the urgent time of conjectural thought as the pulse of the, a theoretical search capable of taking up the question of historical causality and social totality where much of critical theory, leftist, uh, leftist thought and political theory abandoned them in the, 90, uh, in the 80s? These militants, capable of reading the present in Marxist theory, are today's feminist militants. The feminist movement, with its complexity and, inter uh, and heterogeneity, cannot be thought of as a political subject, but rather as a process of ratification of the conjecture, a counter tendency process of trans individual composition that takes shape in the time of an interval, the time of crisis of Marxism, as Althusser enunciated with all its promising ambivalence. 
a process of practical and collective thought that brings together concrete massive struggles, processes of transformation from within the institutions and forms of organization, reticular, territorial, and at the same time international, with an impulse of genuine theoretical curiosity that overflows the established institu institutional frameworks for the, for the production and circulation of theory and knowledge. This real and singular conjunction of theoretical practices and political practices can be the occasion for a resumption of a materialist interrogation of historical causality and non-contemporary plural conception of time and a trans-individual approach to the articulation between the psychic and the collective. In this sense, I dare to say that the feminist terrain offers its surface for a new detour uh, of Althusserian theory, on, uh, one that promises a significant restart, especially around the reformulation of the problem of social reproduction and the controversies raised around this. I am not thinking of a particular theorist to be recognized as the inheritor of Althusser. I am thinking of a complex fabric of the legacy as a compulsive inheritance of an enigma and of a task. Uh, and I believe that the very controversies without author uh, of the feminist field are the ones that are tracing a program of work that constitutes, I dare to say, the resumption of Althusserian battle by other means the active and productive presence of an impasse that sounds hollow. Feminism as a process of collective composition rediscovers today, after a long detour, the need for a complex theory of causality and a plural and a non-contemporary theory of historical time, capable of thinking the concrete and not formal hierarchy between oppressions, indispensable for the outlining of any strategy of intervention. In this regard, in the foreword uh, of a book compiled by Titi Bachataria, uh, Social Reproduction Theory, Remapping Class, uh, Recentering Oppression, Louise Vogel proposes the direction of the theoretical program that will make it possible to articulate the contributions of social reproduction theory itself, with studies uh, uh, on intex. Uh, intersectionality and other concrete analysis in the field of feminist studies in terms of the problem of what we could call historical causality. That is, in terms of the principle of differential and hierarchical articulation of the complex of differences, which allows not only to account for its connection, but also for its various indices of, of efficacy in the articulated whole. I quote uh, here Vogel when saying, I think we must jettison two dearly held assumptions. First, the assumption that the various dimensions of difference, for example, race, class, and gender, are comparable. Second, the implication that the various categories are equal in, cash, uh, in causal way. Our theoretical task would then be to focus on the specificities of each dimension and to develop an understanding on, uh, on, of how it all fits or does not fit together. As we can see, the project consists of conceptualizing the type of process articulations that allows us to think about the whole di the dynamic of capitalist social, uh, social formation. And this opens up a position with respect to the non-empiricist way of understanding material uh, and historical concrete processes and events uh, in other contributions, uh, the question of causality appears to be raised in relation to question of temporality and historical time. In this sense, for example, Cinzia Ruzza uh, has posed a possible dialogue between Marxist studies uh, on the problem of plural temporality, such as John Bassos, Ben Said, uh, Tomba, uh, and on the subjective temporality of fear theory, uh, such as McCallum and Jan Cannon, uh, posing a critical reading of Butler's work on temporality and performativity in order to restore the distinction between formal temporality and concrete historical time. Accordingly, Arutza uh, poses that Butler's formal and abstract temporality of gender performativity must be read in its conjecture as a distinctive feature of the, of the construction of gender and sexual identities in advanced capitalist countries, to the extent that the empty time that takes place in forced repetition must be, in her reading, conceived as mediated by the generalization of, of abstract time given by the diffusion of the commodity form. 
helping to shed some light on what she calls the abstract character of the temporality of gender performativity, Arutza evocates Kevin Floyd and Rosemary Hennessy to relate the reification of sexual identities to the concrete diffusion of commodity mass consumption in capitalist developed countries that they would relate to the consolidation of imperialist international division of labor. This theoretical movement recalls that one of Balibar's uh, in the philosophy of Marx, when he promises to explain the connection of the dual legacy we can recognize as Marxist today in terms of the development of a trans individual materialism. And I quote, on the one hand, the idea of the reification of the bourgeois world uh, in the forms of the generalized commodification of social activities. On the other, the program of an analysis of the mode of subjection implied in the process of exchange, which find its ultimate expression in structural Marxism. Moreover, if on the one hand, as we read in Vogel, the development of a final conceptualization of historical causality would allow feminists to understand the way in which differences coalesce in their unequal efficacies, the postulation of the problem of temporality underlined by Arutza would make thinkable the processual condition of the articulation in the long term of historical transformation and to place it in the singular forms of individuation and subjectivation that constitute the concrete fleshing out of its relations and tendencies. This latter question I mean, animates uh, the work of Silvia Federici and her effort to articulate feminism and Marxism, making room for historical singularity, especially in relation to the concrete historical processes uh, that must be read in the gaps of Marxist theory and the demand of critical development of historical materialism in a feminist and anti-colonial perspective. In Federici's line of work, the operation that the point of view of reproduction opens up uh, to thought interrupts the teleological and contemporaneous temporality that allows for a critique of the neoliberal presentist temporality regime. In Federici's Caliban and the Witch, uh, the problem of historical temporality involves uh, the feminist revision of the critique of primitive accumulation. Uh, Federici expands and complexifies the Marxist critique of capitalism imaginary temporality based on the bourgeois myth of the state of nature introducing uh, genealogies that place the material processes of generalization and the social division of labor articulated with them among the conditions for the emergence of capitalist social relations of separation of the immediate worker, workers to the means of production. In that sense, the operation opens up and enables to think the mode in which the cyclical temporality of expanded reproduction of capital establishes a necessary relation with the, uh, with the repression of a complexity of times, which are exposed uh, to a sort of prehistorical time of capitalism, but pulsate in the grand waters of the, of, of the abstract temporal present of, capitalism, of, of capitalist mode of production. As Arutzas, uh, the work of Federici points toward the double historical and structural operation then constitutes the constitutive double consistency of the problem of historical time that Althusser develops in Lierne Capital. Uh, the problem of the mechanism of a mode of production and the problem of a social formation as a result or an emergence. This double question regarding temporal complexity can be posed in terms of the conception of time at once plural and structured, and it can be the same time uh, the main scheme uh, of the research program that Vogel suggested to face for the development uh, of a feminist social reproduction theory. We know that this concern for the LUD, uh, elucidation and development of a rigorously materialist conception of historical time is found in the heart of Althusserian reading of Marx in Lire le Capital by evoking Freud's concept of time of the unconscious. For Althusser, the research is Designed, um, destined uh, to, to give account of the non-contemporary, non-homogeneous temporality, radically distinguish the Marxist concept of historical time in the terms of a plural but unequally articulated historical temporality, so that the relative and differential condition of the concept of plural times uh, requires a concept of its historical contradictory unity. 
this issue is important because as well as we can read, uh, as we can read uh, in current materialist feminism, a sort of recommencement of Althusserian problematic, we can also take this thesis rigorously and develop a rigorous materialist position within feminist thinking by means of affirming the main principles of Althusserian problematic in order to trace demarcations while identifying ideological tendencies that could impoverish its uh, critical potency. Accordingly, I will pose that some humanist tendencies can be recognized among many feminist theories. Federici's proposal, for example, it turns to be uh, still descriptive in the same sense of description that Vogel's attributes to uh, intersectionality. In both cases, theory does not pursue uh, does not pursue the concept of the unity of heterogeneous plurality, and therefore the very concept of material uh, of materialist determination is lost. Because as Althusser uh, pointed out in Le Capital, it is not enough to say that each time has its own rhythms, uh, some short, some long, uh, we must also think these differences in a rhythm and punctuation in their foundation, in the type of articulation, displacement, and torsion, which harmonizes these different times uh, with one another. We must, says Althusser, uh, pose the question of the mode of the existence of invisible times, the time of economic production as a specific time, a complex and non-linear time, a time of times, a complex time that cannot be read in the continuity of the time of life. Without a concept of temporal, contradictory and unequal unity, which is to say without a concept of the hierarchical and conflictive articulation of differences, the plurality of observable genealogies is, is caught up in Hegelian contemporary time. In the case of Federici's work, as an inverted form of the counter-mythical operation that reduces critical reading to an unveiling of hidden histories by means of an inversion of the myth of smaller producer that involves salary and property to find the truth of slavery and community. Here, a gap opens up in uh, Federici's analysis, which dialogues with a certain displacement of many post-colonial studies that subsume imperialist determinations into colonial ones. The projection of free capitalist accumulation on the forms of violent capitalist accumulation has an effect, um, has an effect that the subsumption of the notion of expanded reproduction of capital and the omission of that of transition. The absence of this distinction produces the politicization of historical causality and the subordination of the problem of economic exploitation to that of state domination. We find ourselves within the Hegelian principle of the state as a concrete universal. Uh, or universal. Um, the plurality of times becomes then irrelevant if it does not offer the concrete condition of its determinations more than the possibility, uh, more than the possibility of finding behind the modern myth of the bourgeois state the truth of the uh, of the absolute power. Uh, and this moment places Federici's work in a specular opposition to the Hegelian theme of phenomenon ethnos truthness, uh, which is to say humanism. It is not incidental that the result of this analysis leaves feminist political thought entangled in a specular relation of inversion, either with Bourgeois, uh, Bourgeois myth of the small producer or with, or with the economicist myth of the English proletariat. Moreover, the absence of the conjectural concept of imperialism uh, synth uh, synthesizes uh, the tendency to blur the conjectural imperialist determination in the capitalist temporality in benefit of a colonial continuity which contributes to, crystal, uh, to crystallize a relatively abstract scheme in the historical critic and blurs the temporal complexity that overdeterminate dialectics and the singular condition of the concrete uh, conjectures. Uh, it is worth remembering that Althusser's preoccupation for deploying the anti-humanist and anti-historicist imprint in his philosophical regarding of Marx constitutes the specifically 
uh, theoretical and philosophical intervention of a much broader struggle against two wide ideological tendencies that outline the shape uh, and shape the dominant ideological conjecture that permeates uh, diverse registers of thought since the early 60s up to nowadays. And I could say that is still the matrix of dominant ideology, conceived as a process of articulation between monopolistic capital and some ideological formations that associate humanitarianism and technocracy. In a manuscript of 1963, Althusser describes it as a constellation that connects theoretical ideologies such as empirism, formalism, and pragmatism to new topics and forms. In some, I quote, everything that from up uh, close or afar touches not reality, but the myth of computers, cybernetics, and electronics. This renewed uh, tendency of technocratic economicism meets in words of Althusser, its sole supplement uh, in the diverse forms uh, in which uh, humanism is reissued as leftism as, and neo-anarchism, uh, modern forms of aestheticism and, in terms of Althusser, the religion of art and the artist that extolled the condition of the creator and, the, and, and grounded on a spontaneous ideology of liberty and revolt. This controversy, sketched out by Althusser in uh, 1963, will receive a renewed impulse after the episodes of May 68, at the heat of which he wrote the posthumous published Sur la Révolution, in which technocratism and anarchism would constitute the two tendencies that embody the pencil-like device into which materialist thought falls as Marxism theoretical and political crisis worsens. Technocratism supposes the reduction of the social relations of production to a technical economic conception of productive forces, either under the form of a substantialization of work uh, or of the subsumption, subsumption of the concept of social reproduction uh, in the sense of a reproduction of skills and technical competencies. And what is called politicism uh, or neo-anarchism consists uh, of the reduction of the social relations of production to a juridical political dimension in the concept of property or to the philosophical political one, the subsumption of economic exploitation into an abstract notion of domination. In a broad sense, we could understand these two tendencies as tones in the weight of breeding the articulation between the instance of the Marxist topic and its overdeterminate uh, uh, causality. Accents that in a way not pure, but as emphasis or slips, tend to simplify the complex social totality and the plural concept of heterogeneous articulated time from hypertrophizing some of its aspects. Similarly, when the different temporalities of transition and reproduction are mixed up, uh, the result is the restoration of historicist conception of time in terms of genesis, uh, which is the, uh, the theological commitment of liberal uh, philosophy. Accordingly, a myth of nature is invoked when politicization of capital subsumes uh, within no rest imperialist forms into colonialist forms. And the crucial point for a theory of social reproduction in terms of the primacy of the relation of, power of, of production over the productive forces have, has been underscored by Althusser in 1975 uh, 75, as the strategic question to understand imperialism. I quote, knowing what productive forces and relations of production are, not only for a given mode of production, but for a social formation in which several modes of production exist under the domination of one of them, that of knowing what become of this unity in a capitalist social formation in the imperialist stage with adds supplementary determinations that are not secondary, but essential to the question of this unity. Uh, finish of the quote. Uh, it can be pointed out that uh, the key difference between unitarian feminist theory of social reproduction and other approaches, such as Federici's, stems from what Althusser considered 
the problem of pre-production under the thesis of the primacy of relations of production over the productive forces, which distances it from a critical conception closer to the humanist theories of reification and alienation. Similarly, Arus's critique to Butler can be developed in order to discover on the surface of the abstract condition of performative time that was in the 90s supposed to be the result of the overcoming of Althusserian interpolation, the restitution of a phenomenological theory of power in the path of Hegelian ethical unity and the humanist reduction of the unconscious because of a lack of a rigorous transindividual notion of law. A sort of transindividual critique of the expressive causality that operates in all humanist uh, deviances allows us to recognize the work of a materialist demarcation in the feminist field controversies. Accordingly, the feminist materialism of social reproduction theory offers a conception that reads a transindividual ontology in the passage from concrete to abstract labor and which conceives that every reading that tends to keep the focus on the individual scene of production as a process of labor or of the reproduction scene, a woman, a family, etc., remains on the abstract temporality of the pure economic logic. To conclude, we can say in ideological terms that, uh, sorry, we can say that in ideological terms, neoliberalism is the process of transformation of humanism uh, ideology. Its extreme deployment or its ominous reverse exposed in the framework of the agonizing crisis of the sovereign subject and the crisis of the illusion of progressive future associated with the barbarization of the decline of the regime of imperialist accumulation in which it took its, its dominant tendency on a global scale. As Althusser stresses uh, in the recent published book on imperialism, what is barbarism? Regression while remaining in place, stagnation while remaining in place uh, of a kind of which human history offers examples by hundreds. Yes, our civilization can perish in place but in accumulating all the suffering of a childbirth that will not end, of a stillbirth that is not a delivery. Neoliberalism is then the name of this barbarization of imperialist capitalism, that imaginary contemporaneity of ideological time that dissolves real historical differences and the contradictions that their coexistence entails in a single homogeneous time to whose critique both Marx and Freud devoted themselves. This constitutes the key to the ideological experience of humanist capitalism, which acquires specific modulations in the various moments of the history of humanism. It is this very conjecture that shows us the path of an extremely necessary recommencement of a transindividual materialism. And I believe that a great portion of feminist thinking is ready to take on this historical task. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalia, and all of our panelists for the amazing interventions today. Um... First question uh, that I got during Vittorio's talk was by Carlos Subrito. Carlos, do you want to state your question? Out of your rounds, Carlos, if not, I can do that for you. Okay, I'll read Carlos's uh, question, Carlos Brito. Um, he says, I wonder how uh, Vittorio thinks, according to the Althusserian text, text that he worked on today, uh, the complementary relation between the theory of conjunction or plural temporality and the crucial in Althusser premise uh, known as the primacy of the structure over its elements. I wonder if we couldn't speak there uh, about a decalage between the time or the times of the elements before they, they encounter and the time perhaps of the same elements once they have been grasped in a structure. Maybe the difference between formal and real subsumption could be thought of that way, perhaps. That's Carlos's question uh, for Vittorio. And then maybe should we do another question uh, for you that I received, Vittorio, or?
Okay. I, I, I reply to the question of Carlos. Okay. Ciao, Carlos. Um, so I think is uh, is um, is the same problem in, in the sense that you have a plurality of times and uh, um, that compose uh, the structure, uh, the take hold, but uh, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, as uh, you have a plurality that are not a uh, kind of harmonia, a pre-established harmonia. I don't know if you do you say harmonia in English, something like harmony, that. Harmony. Yeah. So pre-established harmonia in the totality. So you, you, you have conflict in the totality. And so uh, uh, you never have uh, uh, um, a kind of uh, uh, structure that closes all, uh, all the, the, the temporality that goes in uh, other directions. So is, uh, I, I think the, the, the two problems are uh, the same one. So you, you have not to think the, 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 the plural temporality of the structure as something totally close as something totally uh, 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 articulated in a, in a fixed way, but something that is always uh, uh, modulated and uh, there are always intersections of times. So, and this, this is, it seems to me, the, the, what opens possibility for politics, not, uh, not uh, uh, teleological uh, uh, possibility, not as seeds, but as possibilities of struggles and organization and uh, articulation of politics. Thank you. I think there's a, another question for Vittorio because I know you have to leave um, by Alex S. Um, he asks, uh, is there a way to relate the aleatory and chance elements of Althusser's thought of the encounter to the scatological elements, right? Is there a link? He says, um, for example, how can the role of the dice be thought together with the fullness of parousia that fills the atomistic void? That's a question by Alex S. Could you repeat slowly because I, I, I didn't catch some words. Yes, yes. So is there a way to relate? Uh, Alex asks, the aleatory and chance elements of Althusser's thought of the encounter to the scatological elements. So for example, the how can the role of the dice be thought together with the fullness of parousia that fills the atomistic The world? dice, uh, uh, what is the dice in Spanish? Because I... I, I... Dados. The role of the... Dados. Ah, dados. Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, um, I, I, I I've tried to 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 show the two tendencies in uh, in these uh, writings, and of course uh, uh, they are not systematic writings. So the the the, the elements are uh floating in some uh, in some way they are not uh, not uh, related in a systematic way and of course you you, you can think the the dice in the, in the in the scatological tendencies uh, as something uh, uh, related uh, strictly related with uh, parousia as uh, something that uh, um, from which uh, you can imagine emerges the, the communism and uh, re refuting uh, every teleological um, teleological uh, direction. You have uh, something like uh, uh, like uh, what Derrida calls uh, uh, eschatology without teleology. So you have something like that in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in, um, in Althusser, and uh, 
as in Derrida, you have uh, the, a critic of, the, of a linear time uh, where every uh, uh, instant um, uh, is uh, related to the precedent and there is a kind of, of, uh, of uh, direction of the time. And uh, in, in Derrida, you have the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, gift of the, of the instant. Every instant is a kind of gift. And so the gift, uh, thinkable as uh, the, the gift of the parousia of the communism. And I, I think this is, uh, this is one of the tendency. Of course, uh, I think is, uh, of course is the tendency that, that is uh, less interesting, interesting for me. And so I, I have not uh, worked a lot of the, on that, but I think it's possible to to do a reconstruction, and I think that Panagiotis, in his intervention, has given a, a great contribution to this, uh, to, the, to the reconstruction of this tendency. Excellent, thank you, Vittorio. I think we have a question also by Mar Bernardo Moreira. For all the panelists, uh, for Natalia, Panagiotis, and Vittorio, Bernardo, do you want to ask your question? Uh, yes, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, great. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I would like to ask a question to Mr. Mofino, Mr. Sotiris, and Mrs. Romay. Uh, in Mr. Mofino's presentation, he mentions the relation between Althusser's aleatory materialist concepts and Deleuze's concept of the rhizome, which is emphasized in Althusser's late work. Um, in Mr. In Mr. So serious presentation, he explores the concepts of margin and the critique that Althusser makes on the traditional party organization in the left, preferring autonomous and marginal expressions of the communist struggle. In Mrs. Romay's presentation, she, she defends feminist materialism as a theoretical and political movement that can realize the political approach that Althusser proposes in his social reproduction theory. So I ask all of you, can we interpret those three elements as a departure from the traditional Leninist model of political organization? What is the political theory of that post-structuralist tendency of Althusser? And is he close to, for example, Deleuze and Guattari molecular political revolution? Thank you. Thank you so much, Bernardo. Sorry, Who I, wants I, to go? I can uh, reply brief because I have to go. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. But um, yeah, yes, of course, in this sense. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that uh, Panagiotis will uh, reply largely on that because uh, his intervention was on that. Uh, the problem is that this reference is not systematic at all. We can speak of that, of course. Uh, uh, Althusser in 77 and 78 was, uh, was fascinated by the autonomia, the, the autonomia movement in Italy. And, uh, but uh, I think that you cannot find more than a, a, than a fascination, not a, a systematic development of this. And uh, we must think that in 76, he asked Balibar to write the text on the dictatorship of uh, proletariat. So uh, in, in 60, 76, he was a neo-Leninist and uh, uh, a full neo-Leninist. So in 77, uh, he, he criticized, uh, it's, it's paradoxically because he criticized the party because he abandoned the, the dictatorship of proletariat at the same time is fascinated by um, by the, the movement autonomia in Italy. So it's it's a, it's a very ambiguous and strange position in this sense. So I'm sorry, I I, I have to go. It was a great pleasure to to be with you all uh, today and I hope to see you in person uh, uh, not uh, far from now.
Thank, Thank you, Victorio. Thank you. So, Natalia Pargiotis, do you want to take on uh, Bernardo's question? Yeah, I, I can answer briefly also because uh, well, uh, because my, my I think we lost Natalia real quick. Natalia? The conversation is cutting off. I, I, I will I will return uh, with my phone. Okay. 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 Give me a minute. In the meantime, if you have other questions, uh, please send them to me via message or type in the chat and I will call you uh, in order. Um, here we go, Natalia's back. Natalia, are you there? Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I will, I will. Now? Yes. Okay. See, uh, yeah. okay. uh, this is the south of the world, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so hello, everyone. Um, no, no, I, I, I don't want to, to open up a, a big discussion uh, on this topic because it's really huge. Uh, but I, I'm, I would say that uh, these positions in Althusser uh, thought must be related each time to the specific uh, struggle in a specific conjunction. So uh, I would be very careful to, to develop uh, abstract and general uh, consequences, uh, for example, about uh, the political form, because for example, in Kefer, he states explicitly uh, that the the question of the political form, uh, whether it's a party of, or a movement, must uh, be guided by a rigorous uh, analysis of a concrete situation. Cut out again, Natalia. Let's wait just a second to see if the connection comes back. Um, but perhaps, Panagiotis, do you want to uh, address Bernardo's question about political forms? Yeah, I can say, well, uh, I mean, this is, this is a really interesting question. I, I think that, uh, well, Althusser seems to engage more with Derrida. Uh, with Deleuze, we don't have such a, such a very vigorous engagement, although uh, perhaps in the archives we might find things. I think he, he is fascinating by metaphors. This is something that becomes all the more, uh, more st stronger uh, in the late 1970s, and especially in the 1980s. Um, so I, I think that, especially in regards to rhizome and, and the molecular aspects, I, I don't, I'm not sure. On the other hand, uh, I mean, we have, uh, we can do it. I mean, when, when we, one can reconstruct a dialogue, it's really interesting. One might say that uh, in, in a certain way, we're dealing in the broader sense with uh, attempts to philosophically think of, of the possibility of events, of the possibility of ruptures. And, and how this is conditioned by subaltern dynamics. Uh, uh, one, for example, and, and you can find very interesting points of dialogue, such as Deleuze in, in the small Spinoza, uh, uh, talking about uh, the art of organizing encounters, which might be a, a very nice uh, 
the art of organizing good encounters, which can be a very nice uh, description of, of Althusserian, perhaps inspired politics. At least that's that's how I read it. Uh, so yes, but but uh, on the other hand, uh, I think that Vittorio pointed exactly that uh, Althusser becomes all, all all too fascinated with with autonomous movements. He doesn't really think or elaborate, especially in the difficult conditions after the tragedy of 1980, of, of the ways defeat is not only inscribed in the part of the organized political forms, the crisis of the organized communist movement, defeat is also inscribed in the subaltern classes. One might see that in, there's always a kind of very, very positive reference. Uh, and he doesn't uh, actually try to think the, the, medi the mediation between these levels, the mediation between the autonomous movements and the possibility of a political movement, which would uh, indeed, which in a certain way would also imply a dialogue with, uh, with the Lesian uh, thematics, like the becoming minority and things and, and such uh, aspects. I think he, he, he tries to find uh, all the more a kind of resource of hope, I would state it in this sense, uh, because it is obvious that uh, until 1976, and you can see it in Le Vache Noir, you can see it in the public pronouncements, you can see in how he intervenes in the dialogue in the communist, uh, he tries in a certain way to, to articulate a, a highly original conception of revolutionary politics, very, very open-ended, uh, inspired by the materialism of the encounter, inspired by a left-wing reading of the cultural revolution, inspired by the emergence of movements that create the elements of communism. And he tries to articulate it in a very uh, classical communist, uh, Marxist-Leninist uh, manner. And at the same time, he writes these very big poetic notes on you know on the margin and the beach and, and uh, the sound of communism so 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 it, it's, it's a very contradictory aspect and he he sort of attempts to go over this this contradiction which is very evident for example in the 1977 uh, crisis of marxism intervention by saying on the one hand the crisis on the other hand the autonomous movement the element the isolates of communist the communist literalities uh, and is missing exactly that the the, the idea the possibility of communist politics is not when you just realize these two tendencies, that is, autonomous movements and political insufficiency, on the other hand. This has been the tragedy of the working class movement since, since the 19th century. In, in a certain way, this is the normal condition of the working class movement, the insufficiency and inadequacy of political forms. The, 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 the encounter means exactly the moment you actually try to short circuit to use Balibar's metaphor, these two elements try to find forms of mediation, even con however contingent or difficult. And, and But this is exactly the notion of the political labor. And, and although he thinks the political practice, especially when he discusses Machiavelli, I don't think he actually, he, there's always this limit, at least in my reading, uh, of thinking, what is the kind of this, the, the, cons this, the, the kind of political labor, the kind of, painful process of political reconstruction that this, this entails, what institutional forms this requires, what organizational forms, what forms, for example, he says, give, give their masses their voices, this voice, this phrase from the 1976 intervention in the communist, uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of France, of the French Communist Party, but he never says, what, is, what does this mean, uh, I mean, organizationally, what kind of intellectual resources it requires, what forms of new uh, militant intellectuality is involved here. And I think the inability to think this leads him all the more going towards this quasi eschatological conception uh, of communism as, as parousia, as not as you know, conscious labor, <laughs> conscious political labor that uh, Vittorio so, so pointedly uh, you know, articulated in his presentation. Thank you, Natalia. Do you want to pick up from, from this point uh, that you're making uh, before? You're mentioning Kefer. Uh, and yeah, so sort of thinking maybe about just to add something to Bernardo's question, uh, you know, even just kind of autonomism of Silvio Federici as well, and kind of your, your pointed critique of, of what you call neo anarchism, right? 
I mean, Panagiotis brought this figure of, you know, the interview with Althusser in Rome, right? In which he's saying many things, but one of the things he says is, uh, you know, I'm an anarchist, he says, because anarchism is beyond, uh, I forget the exact words, but I wonder if, if, if like Panagiotis, you see perhaps a possibility of an encounter or some kind of uh, articulation between what we can call maybe more autonomous struggles and mass uh, organization, right? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, now, I, I was uh, recalling Kefer because uh, I think that the, the main question here uh, is uh, to pose the, the analysis of the concrete conjecture uh, in a priority to the decision uh, about uh, which forms of organization uh, would uh, could suit uh, a revolutionary strategy. Um, so uh, I think that um, the, the this ambivalence that uh, Panagiotis uh, points uh, is also uh, related to, I, I remember, for example, the kind of um, uh, disappointment and very, uh, a nihilistic reading that Althusser gives in the uh, the authentic materialistic tradition, uh, the unique the materialistic tradition, and in 1985 when he says that uh, Machiavelli does not uh, is not uh, any more useful for us because uh, the the conjecture of uh, Late capitalism uh, is, a, is a conjecture we, without a center uh, of political power. So um, I think that uh, there uh, we can find the, the limits uh, of Althusserian uh, reading of his own conjecture uh, and, and the way in which we read that readings it must be. Um, mediated by our uh, analysis of our own conjecture. Uh, so uh, my, my, uh, my answer is uh, perhaps that uh, we are not able today to perform um, a better question. And that is uh, the best, uh, the first task uh, we must, we must um, uh, take on. Thank you. Uh, another question now by Claudio uh, Aguayo, who just sent it, that goes along the same lines um, for what you're saying, Natalia and Panagiotis as well. Claudio, would you like to ask your, uh, ask your question? Okay, it's Italian. Okay, so <clears throat> my question is, you know, having into account this whole discussion about autonomies, um, the loose uh, molecular revolution, the problem of, of reproduction, technocratic, technocratism and neonarchism, um, what do you think about the, the theoretical status of the concept of dictatorship of the proletariat in Althusser's uh, thought, you know? Um, because I think that's, you know, something important to understand the, the role of, of, of the state and the weapons, um, to say it broadly, you know, in Althusser's uh, over. Yeah, my question is for, for the whole panel. Unfortunately, Vitor is not here anymore. I think. Panagiotis, Natalia, who wants to go first? I can try. Okay. Okay, well, uh, well, this, this is, I think, I mean, there are, there, Althusser's insistence on, in those debates and also Balibar's uh, in the 1970s of, uh, on the usefulness of, of the notion of the dictators of the proletariat, of course, it was very important. This is not to be underestimated. I mean, they tried to defend uh, a conception of, of, you know, the necessary revolutionary rupture, 
and they and they were part of a broader elaboration of transition as constant struggle, intensification of class struggle, and experimentation. There's no doubt uh, about that. I mean, these were still they were still pertinent interventions, and it would be wrong in my readings to dismiss them as uh, you know. Uh, what in France, in France, is called langue de bois, uh, like classical wooden language of, of you know the, the old style communist movement. Uh, and even though you know, if, if whoever has met with Balibar, he, he always says that about in, in a certain way about the book on the dictatorship of the proletariat. Although he never really disavows it, he, he's sort of self-critical about it. But I think it's still a very good book because exactly it, what is the importance? It's the importance of stressing movements in stressing initiatives in stressing experimentation this is the importance of rethinking transition and i believe uh, th uh, and this could also be described in my reading as a molecular process although i would point towards the, the notion of the molecular in gramsci which is uh, also a very <laughs> important aspect and the idea that uh, and the way that althusser suggests that a certain uh, level of autonomy, autonomous movements, is an is integral aspect of any transition process, of course it's important. I mean, it, it is the idea that we move beyond the idea of building socialism towards socialism as collective struggle, you know, experimentation and social transformation. And the same goes in a certain way to this idea that I mean, uh, the horizon of politics is a communist horizon in the sense of a radically antagonistically, antagonistic, highly original uh, social configuration uh, uh, and, and an exit for uh, uh, inventing the new as Ben Said might have, uh, have called it. And I think this is still very, very uh, relevant. Uh, in but of course, the, the idea is, I mean, all the challenges, how do you incorporate them into to use again uh, a Machiavellian and Gramscian metaphor into the contemporary modern prints. That is, how do you articulate autonomous movements, political initiatives? But I think what is important, and to bring it closer to contemporary debate, it points towards this idea that any movement towards communism or social emancipation, or whatever name we try to use it, it's never simply a movement about of, of interpolation. It's not about a political idea that interpolates uh, persons to you know march forward to a certain which means exactly for me the limit of any let's say left left populist conception of, of, of politics today. It points towards that you need to have a politics that is based on material collective processes happening in society, but actual material transformation struggles are not performances, are also sites of production of new social forms. Struggles are sites of production of new social relationships. Uh, 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 and this, this for me is a very crucial aspect. It's very important that Althusser stresses it. And it points to, to something that is very pertinent today because sometimes, especially if we talk about uh, you know left-wing politics, it is it is as if there are struggles. Struggles are just you know changes in the balance of forces, which then are translated electorally. Then you have a government, a progressive government. Then the progressive government induces social change, which is as far from this idea of communism as a contingent, you know, uh, conjectural material uh, movement and practice uh, as possible. Uh, and I think the same, uh, Natalia has written a lot on that, on, uh, especially in regards also to the feminist, to the feminist uh, movement. And I think th this is a lesson that we can take from Althusser. We can take this lesson also, but also stress the tensions, which is also an open, I mean, uh, the, open, the open question of how do you incorporate it into a political process. This, I think, and I think this has been in, in, a, in a certain way, the, the most open question since the, you know, since the late 1970s, and you see it resurfacing in many instances. You see it resurfacing when you have, you had, very, you, 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 we've had in the past 40 years, large waves of struggles, many of them with this kind of 
character of popular initiatives from below. And then you always have a problem of how are they incorporated in an organic way, integral and dynamic way into political process and not just being represented. Uh, this is, uh, you, you can see it, for example, you can see it in Argentina, for example, in, in, in the movements of the early 2000s, you can see it in Greece, which was one of the elements missing. We found an electoral outlet, but not a transformation process in 2015, <laughs> to put it uh, in a mild way. And, uh, and, and you saw it perhaps in the broader, broader sense in what perhaps misleadingly we call the Arab Spring. So you saw it perhaps in Occupy, the limits of Occupy in the US uh, or the Zilaison in, in France. So this is the idea, you have the autonomous movements, but the crucial question is how do you transform this potential into, uh, into them, into, not into a political project, making them integral part of the political process, making them the moving force of it. This is the open question for me. I would add that um, for one side, the, there are two ideas that, 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 that I found uh, interesting in the, in the idea of proletariat dictatorship. Uh, for nowadays, uh, especially the, the idea of class dictatorship um, and, and that, that, that can uh, let us uh, think about the state um, as a monopoly of monopolies and as a limit to, to in distance, uh, 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 real material, <laughs> real material limit to, to uh, transformation processes. Uh, <clears throat> that is on one side. But on the other side, or, or in the same side, <laughs> I, I think that um, we, we must think of this uh, kind of uh, experiment uh, political experiment first um, as, as, um, uh, within its proper um, uh, nature of political thought. That is to say, uh, I think that, that we must um, uh, wait for a moment and, and not ask uh, for uh, a, a, a plain theoretical uh, response to this uh, dilemma. Uh, I think that uh, we must persevere on this uh, conjunction uh, between um, theoretical practices and political practices being the special, uh, the, the specificity of, of political practices to, uh, to, to give the, the uh, materialist analysis of the situation. Uh, the that we, uh, that I just the the temporary uh, the temporal uh, or the temporary of the um, uh, what to be done. So uh, I think that uh, perhaps we, we are um, quite anxious and try to uh, to discover in Alcester the guide <laughs> uh, uh, to 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 solve uh, our our present current problem. Uh, but I think that it is better to find there um, uh, uh, some criteria of how to distinguish carefully this uh, specific nature of, of different registers of thought. Uh, and there, uh, I would say that uh, in our conjecture, uh, the, the, there is a, a risk which I am interested in. Um, on, on some uh, uh, autonomous uh, thinking uh, that restores a kind of um, naturalism, a kind of uh, image of a plain exterior experiences. You know? uh, I think that we, we, we must um, wonder ourselves uh, about a kind of um, autonomous experience that can be placed in a sort of exterior immanence to neoliberalism as counter tendencies and, and not uh, as, as a kind of isolated, uh, plainly exterior experiences. I think that uh, at least for, for feminist uh, movement, th that is a, a, a bigger risk. Uh, I think that uh, some post-colonial studies and, and movements 
uh, also uh, uh, have that tendency and, and I think that uh, it is quite neoliberal <laughs> to, 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 to insist in that uh, image uh, of a, plain uh, a plainly exterior practice of politics. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I don't have an answer, but, but, but I, I, I think that these questions can be uh, uh, answered in general, can be answered in an abstract way, uh, must be answered in each specific conjecture and the controversy uh, and, the, and, the, uh, and within the, the relation of uh, controversial forces that, that give consistence to that structure. Thank you, Natalia. We have another question for you um, that was written by Natalie Susilis. Uh, and I'm just going to read it. Um, she says, thank you for your thought-provoking paper. I am interested in hearing more about the relation between Althusserian conceptions of plural temporality insofar as this intervenes in intersectional feminism and serves as a basis for new approaches to thinking about feminist struggles. You speak also of the urgent tasks of the feminist movement today. Can you say more about the nature of those tasks? That's Natalie, questions for Natalia. Well, uh, if we have 10 or, or more hours, perhaps, <laughs> uh, yeah, because the, the, the question of plural temporality, uh, it is very well developed in, in many uh, research and books. Uh, so, uh, I can't uh, give a, a huge uh, developing here, but um, I may say that uh, I'm sure that it is um, uh, it is the way that uh, in which uh, adversarial problematic uh, recommends uh, in our in our conjecture to show our uh, our own uh, impoverishing tendencies. The, 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 the very impoverishing tendencies of our critical uh, conjecture, of our theoretical conjecture. Uh, I, I find that uh, when we study the, the, this um, temporal plurality as a, a, a plurality of, of, a, of heterogeneous times, but as a, and also as a special uh, unity of that heterogeneity, um, we can start to, to recognize a, a, our own um, overlapping of different times uh, in our analysis. Uh, for ju just to, to, to give a, a, some examples, uh, for example, uh, this uh, uh, you can find in, in Butler, in, in when, when Butler um, proposed uh, 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 an overcoming of the, of the theory of interpolation in Althusser, the, um, the reduction of the social uh, complex totality to the, the uh, inner space of uh, law and power. When you, when you do, such a such a movement, the 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 complex uh, heterogeneity of historical time is uh, impoverished. Uh, something uh, something something similar uh, you can, for example, uh, find uh, in, in what I I already uh, comment uh, about uh, federalists, but in the form of an inversion of a uh, historicism uh, with, a, with a sort of um, a, a reduction of critical operation to the, the operation of an inversion of the uh, spiritual uh, Hegelian time. So there are many forms in which um, in our own analysis, you can find them, for example, in uh, Wendy Brown's analysis of neoliberalism. Also, uh, we, uh, when she also reduces the, the, 
the total uh, the, the social totality to to a kind of uh, political or juridical totality uh, so it, in many ways um, what is uh, what is lost is the decalage uh, uh, what is lost is for example the contradictory unity of ideological uh, unit uh, so what is lost is what what Peche would call the 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 primacy of the unconscious over the conscious uh, an example of, of, of that tendency is, for example, some of the writings of uh, Bifo Berardi. Uh, when you when, when you or some of the uh, studies uh, on, on the neoliberal subjectivity informed by uh, some Foucauldian uh, tendencies, when you find, for example, a, a, a constructive theory of, of subjectivity with no unconscious. So you, you can find that, that way of the uh, equivocity, that way of the failure of the ritual, that way uh, where the, 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 the very structure of the uh, interpolation dispositive fails uh, at, each, uh, at each new step. Uh, in, so I, I would say that the, the very and very simple um, join between Marxist theory and, and uh, psychoanalysis that the category of overdetermination embodies in Althusserian uh, long-term program is still nowadays uh, a great uh, critique uh, weapon uh, for us to, to, to read the very uh, risk in our own theory, in, in perhaps in the best theories uh, that we have to, to critique around conjecture. Uh, and, I, and I think that uh, for, it, for, for its own uh, singular uh, moment, the feminist uh, movement, not a specific feminist theory, but the whole movement with all its debates and controversies uh, is in some way um, giving rise to this dilemma is a uh, it, 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 uh, re uh, rewriting this dilemma in, in new terms but, but sometimes uh, uh, effectively effectively informed by the by the very uh, tasks of the intervention of the political intervention um, so uh, i'm quite optimistic <laughs> there uh, of course uh, I must say that um, some of the, uh, uh, in, in some way, the, the, the potency of this movement is also that it is very close to neoliberal tendencies. So uh, I think that um, is that a very ambivalence, is that very, um, that is the way uh, in which I think this idea uh, of uh, immanent exteriority, uh, which is very uh, dangerous for, for a, a, a fair and a, and, a, and, a, and a rigorous theoretical development, but very interesting for, a, for, a, uh, for political practice. So we must uh, analytically uh, separate these these two registers of thought and these two registers of practice, and then uh, make a a, a rearticulation or, or, or start to thinking and reflecting about uh, how to uh, articulate in in in, in a tactic and, and, and in a strategic dimension these two different registers. So uh, to finish. Uh, I would say that the task for, for feminist women is to develop theory, uh, to develop theory in the in the. I would say to to uh, to overcome uh, intersectionality to 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 the question of causality, not not also to describe the many forms of of oppressions and and inequalities uh, and injustice, but to 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 produce the principle of its 
of its encounter, of its, uh, of its unity, of its historical unity, uh, to, to, to give a, 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 a better uh, explanation of the conjecture. But also, at the same time, uh, to perform the many experiences uh, and, and transfeminist uh, practices uh, permeating the, 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 the many forms of, of existing organizations uh, to, to, to encounter this, these two extremes of the change, uh, but never to, to letting the, this, this uh, restoration of the whole change to the spontaneous result of politics. We can just say that, that uh, everything has to do with everything. So uh, the, the racist uh, struggle, anti-racist struggle and the feminist struggle because we are in the whole world and because, uh, uh, no, I, I think that the, the task for theory is to uh, perform those links in a, in a theoretical way. And, and, the, and the task for, for political thinking is to, to imagine what, what does not exist yet. <laughs> so uh, there is the, the dilemma, I would say. Well, thanks so much, Natalia. So on that note, uh, we'll close the first session. Thank you so much. Let's give a round of applause to Natalia, Panagiotis, and Vittorio. Uh, thank you for the second day of reading out to um politically conference. And we'll be back uh, in the next islet of communism in the Zoom universe uh, in two hours and a half.